Join the quest to hit pins with balls in Pinball Quest. The princess has been kidnapped by monsters, so it's up to the hero of the Pinball Kingdom to get her back and kill all of the monsters with murder. Or pinball skills. Well, actually, they'll probably just get stuck on the second level because it's designed really poorly. And thus, we roll into the biggest problem Pinball Quest has. The poor table design. For each of the tables is designed on a dual layer basis. A top layer and a bottom layer. It's designed like this to try and emulate an actual pinball table, being taller than it is wide. However, because it's designed like this, it makes it feel like everything's squished together, thus making it hard to hit your targets. This is also compounded by the fact that the flippers don't work in an analogous manner. Instead, it feels like the flippers can send the ball in one of three places, instead of having a more fluid range of movement to send the ball. And unfortunately, all of the locations that the flippers can send the ball are kind of nowhere near where you'd want to actually be. And this ultimately means you're going to be relying a lot more on bumpers to try and get your ball where you need it to be. And that makes progression feel a lot more random, and that's no good. The controls are also a little bit wonky. You use the A button to move the right flipper, and the left button on the directional pad to move the left flipper. There's not a single control that uses both, and the fact that you're relying on both sides of the controller to move one flipper each is a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. On top of this, the levels aren't designed with multiple flippers in mind. It might have been a memory limitation, but once you get to the top level of the pinball table, you have to physically move your flippers with the up button. And unfortunately, this takes time. So by the time your flippers get there, the ball might already be in the gutter, heading back down to the bottom of the table, forcing you to kind of restart the entire level. It's frustrating, and combined with the lack of fluid control over where you send your ball, removes any sense of strategy from the game. There are a total of four modes to play on, although that's kind of a misnomer. In actuality, there's two modes. The standard pinball table, which they offer three, and then the adventure mode. The adventure mode in and of itself is kind of interesting, because it creates a story for your pinball. Gives it an environment to roll around in and stuff. It even has boss fights. And that's a very cool idea, but the fact that you can't really control what you're doing kind of removes any sort of sense of fun or enchantment that this mode might give. And I swear the second table is just completely broken. I mean, look at this. It automatically sends you straight to the top to fight a boss, as opposed to working your way there like the previous level, and then it kind of automatically sends you back to the bottom. And there doesn't seem to be any way to work your way back to the top after this. So yeah, the adventure mode is kind of unfortunately broken. The other three tables are Pop Pop, which is a kind of interesting combination of pinball, bowling, and billiards all at once. And I like this idea, but again, it has the same problem of being a squished table with an over-reliance on bumpers and frustrating control. The only time you feel like you have any free control over the ball is when you're playing on the billiards section. You have Circus, which is a largely forgettable pinball table. It feels fairly standard, but again, it suffers from the same problems as the other tables. And then you have Viva Golf, which is probably the one table in this game that's really worth anything. And while it does suffer from the compressed nature of all the other tables, it at least has a third flipper up on top. And if nothing else, it's got a little bit of a cute design to go with it. The soundtrack is kind of 50-50. While the adventure mode themes are largely forgettable, and aside from the fact that the circus theme seems to steal the first four notes of zippity doo and then plays it on a loop, neither of those are terribly interesting. The theme to the table labeled Pop Pop is actually kind of catchy though, I like that. And once again, Viva Golf rises above the rest by having a really catchy theme that sounds like it could almost be playing out a Kirby or something. I think, in the end, Pinball Quest is the embodiment of interesting ideas with just a terrible, terrible execution. I'm not sure if that's due to technical limitations, hardware limitations, or simply a lack of experience by the development team, but ultimately this game is a little bit of a mess, and it's a shame too because the idea of an adventure game that unfolds as you play pinball is not an idea without merit, but unfortunately it felt like no one understood how a pinball table should be designed, and it controlled really poorly. But here's hoping someone else takes this idea and makes it work, because I think there's a lot of potential here. And if nothing else, 
there's already a million and one other different gimmicky pinball games out there. In fact, I think there was a Gundam one on the Game Boy Color I should really look into.